So this is a review of formula mass, percent by mass, and some hydrate problems. So let's get started with number one. And what I'd like you to do for me today is I would like you to um, follow along with me with the worksheet you have in front of you that should look a lot like the one that you're looking at right now with me. So let's start with number one. Now, number one states, what is the formula mass? Now, it's got a couple of synonyms. For those that don't know what that means, a bunch of names that mean the same thing. Formula mass, gram formula mass, molecular mass, they all mean the same thing. And they're the mass per formula. Now, you're going to learn that means the mass per one mole. But for right now, it's the mass per formula. So what we want to do with a formula mass is what would be the mass of one of these compounds, or I say, quote, molecules or particles. Now, these are ionic compounds. They're not molecules. But let's say, what's the mass of one of these in the formula? So we need the formula. It's not given, so we have to go back to our chemical formula writing, which is very important for this unit as we go forward. So let's write this. Before I can find the mass of this formula, I need the formula. So we have to write it. So magnesium phosphate, that's right, magnesium. The one that goes in front is positive. And magnesium, as we've learned, is an, an element that's Mg. Now I we need to know we need to know the charge of Mg to make this work. Now I know it's positive too because I've been doing this for a while. But if you do not know, you need to look at a reference table. Let's bring one up. And boom, there it is. Okay. Periodic table of elements, go find magnesium. It's a very reactive element, uh, metal. And there it is. It likes to become plus two. So we use plus two there. This is the charge the elements like to become. So magnesium is plus two. Okay. Well, then we have Phosphate. Now, if it ended in phosphide, that would tell me that it's binary, just two elements, and that we would just have the phosphorus atom. But it does not. It ends in an 8, and that's the name of a polyatomic ion. So if you don't know what this is, we go to usually go to table E. Now, table E, I call the what the heck is that table because you, you don't notice something. So that phosphate, we go to table E to figure that out. Let's go there. And there is table E in all its glory. And what is a phosphate? So we look it up. And for those that can't see, open your eyes. And the phosphate is right there, PO4, negative 3. OK, going back. So our phosphate is PO4, one, one phosphorus, and four oxygens. And the whole cluster, this is a polyatomic ion, is negative 3. So what we're going to do is crisscross and use the lowest ratio of these ions. So we need a 3 here and a 2 here. And what that gives me, party people, is we get magnesium with 3 and a phosphate as we crisscross for lowest terms. We need two of them, so I need the parentheses. This is something you should have already. So now that we have the formula, we can get the mass per formula. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and look at our formula right here and say, hey, in one of these, there's three magnesiums. So what I say is, OK, there's three magnesiums. And since we're trying to find the mass, what's the mass of one of these magnesiums? OK, well, three of them times the mass of one. So we've got to go back to the periodic table. Let's do that. And we find our magnesium. And this is the atomic mass. This is an AMU's atomic mass units. And for every one magnesium, there's 24.305 atomic mass units. So we're going to use it per atom right now, even though we would transfer this to moles later. So in one of these, the mass is 24.35. We'll round that to 24. You're, you're allowed to do that. OK, so 24. So um, 3 times 24, and I'm getting that from the periodic table. OK, times 22, 24, I should say, is a 72. OK, next up, we have how many phosphorus? How many P's do you see? Remember, there's two in these parentheses, right? There's two phosphorus. And inside the parentheses, think of what? Two of these phosphate ions. So if you've got two of these phosphate ions, that's what this two means outside the parentheses, you have two P's. So two Ps, two times each 
P. What's the atomic mass unit of phosphorus? Well, let's go. Let's go back to our reference table. We should have these out. And there's P. The mass is 30.9. We round to 31. Okay, so party people, we know it's 31. 2 times 31. The reason why it's 2 times 31 is two of them, is 62. I know you guys have done this before, but I'm just making sure we cover all bases. All right, and then how many oxygens? There's four in each of these phosphate ions, but there's two of these. So 2 times 4 is 8, just like 2 times 1 is 2. If you don't see that, if there's two of these particles, how many O's all together? 4 plus 4 is 8. There's 8 oxygens. And each oxygen has atomic mass unit of 16. Right here. Right here, guys. The mass. Those that don't know what you're doing, you should know. 16. Round that to 16. And what I've got is 8 times 16. You put this in your calculator. Okay, if you don't know your 16 timetables, 16 times 8. What you get is 128. Okay, 128, and we're going to add this all together. You should be doing it with me just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Not that you can stop me because it is a video. And I get 262. Okay, and the unit is grams per something. Okay, so it's 262, and we're going to call it grams per mole. I, don't, I know you don't know what a mole is yet, but we'll call it grams per mole or grams per one of these. That's basically where we're going with this. Okay, and that is the mass of the formula, the formula mass. So number two is something I would like you to do on your own, okay, when uh, this video ends. And you can check the key. So let's go on to number three. Here we go, number three. What is the percent by mass of calcium and calcium nitrate? All right, so this is the next phase of the problems. They kind of, they're very sequential. We found the mass of the formula. We found it per one mole, but now they want a percentage. A percentage is basically a fraction. You know, 50% is a half, 33% is a third. How much of the, if I was to have this calcium nitrate, how much of it in fractions, okay, is calcium a part of this in terms of mass? So in order to do a percentage, it's a part over total times 100. Now that gives me percentage party people, and this percentage is what I'm delivering from number three. Now, what's the total? How do I get the total? Why don't we pick one mole? Now one mole is something you haven't learned yet, but I know it's going to equal this total number of grams from the formula. Look at the one we just did above, party people. Okay, this is the mass of one mole from using the mass of all the atoms here, or the mass of one of them as I uh, write over my work here. So that's the mass of one of them, okay? So if we go down, let's go find the mass of one of them. So let's do a formula mass, and that'll be my total. So let's do it. It's exciting. Not really, but we'll pretend. So I've got one calcium, as we did before. One times the mass of a calcium. So we go to a reference table. We, we zoom over to the calcium sides, which is the metals, and here we go. We're trying to get there. Calcium is 40.08. It's the mass of one of them, or one mole of them, and that's 40. So going back, so we get 40, so 4 times 40. I know my 1 times tables is 40. I've got how many n's? Right, 2 times 1 is 2 n person in the back there. Correct job. So yeah, just raise your hand next time. So yeah, kind of kind of scary. 2 times 14. Now where do I get the 14 from? You should know where these numbers come from. I'm getting the 14 from the periodic table. As you do these, you'll see these. So I'm going back to the nitrogen, back to the nonmetals, upper right hand corner. And there's my 14 for the nitrogen. Okay. And last, last but not least, I have um, how many oxygens? Remember, there's two of these nitrate polyatomic ions. Two times three is six. You get six oxygens. Six times uh, 16. Okay. If you know your 16 times tables, which I don't, times six, I get 96. And I add these together to get the mass per one of them, or one mole as I've been using, plus 28 
plus 96, and I get 164. Now, that's not your answer. Okay, don't be a robot. Don't just copy the problems. This is not, if I was asking what the formula or molecular mass or gram formula mass of calcium nitrate, you would be right, but I'm not looking for that. I want the percent by mass. So all we found was the total, which is 164 or 164. Okay? Now, what, what's the part I'm looking for? Well, the part is what they're asking for. They're asking for the calcium. My friends in chemistry, the calcium is right here. So what part are we looking for? We're looking for the 40. So the 40 goes up top here. 40 over 164. Now, times 100. That's the part they're asking for. So when you do percentage, you can pick any size you want. I choose one of these, or the formula mass, or one mole as my total. Let's do the math. 40 divided by 164 gives me times 100, 24.3 percent, okay, and 24.3, or in this case, 0.4 percent, and that is my answer, okay, number four, you will do on your own, okay, and check the key, let's draw, let's go down to number five now, number five is showing us a new type of compound called a hydrate, now, what a hydrate is, is a compound like we've been doing, a salt, an ionic compound, that has water locked in the crystal. So if I was to draw this, I would have magnesium plus 2 in my crystal. I'd have my CO3 negative 2. And these are ions that make crystals. That's what ionic compounds are. And this positive will attract the negative of another carbonate. And this would attract a positive for magnesium plus two, and this positive positive tracks this negative. So what you got is a negative, and I'll just write over it because it's getting sloppy. This negative attracts this positive. This positive attracts this negative. This negative attracts this positive, and it goes in all directions. However, inside the crystal, we have these molecule ion attractions. We've got the negative part of water attracting the positive, and we've got the positive part of water attracting the negative. And what we have is we have water molecules that are locked in the crystal at exact ratios. So we want to find in these types of problems what the percent by mass of water is. So what is happening in these reactions, we're taking the magnesium carbonate, we're going to heat them to drive off the water, it's going to become the anhydrate which is MgCO3 that's the dried compound, no longer water, and the five waters are going to be driven away as gas. This will remain as a solid. So what we do in lab is we heat this guy until all of the waters, molecules, are given enough energy to overcome these attractive forces and escape as a gas. And what we're left is the dried salt, which is the salt without the waters, called now the anhydrate. Okay? Now in this question, what they want is what's the percent by mass of water in this hydrate? Okay, so percent by mass, we just did that. Just did that is part over total times a hundred. The total I want is the entire mass of one of these, or per one mole as I keep saying. So how do we find the total of one of these? Well, we're going to have to add everything up like we did before. We're going to have to do a formula or a gram formula mass. So let's do it. How many magnesiums are here? Well, we have one magnesium. One times the mass of magnesium is 24. I'm getting this from the periodic table. I don't have to show you anymore. Is 24. We have one carbon. 1 times the atomic mass of carbon is 12 from the periodic table. I don't think I have to show you. I have 3 oxygens. Now, Mr. Gorodsky, wait a minute. You've got 5 oxygens over here, and you've got 3. Shouldn't that be 8 altogether? Well, I say when you're doing hydrate problems, keep the water together. Just see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to deal with the 3 oxygens here, 3 oxygens. Each oxygen has a... Um, atomic mass of 16, 
So this becomes 48. Now, what I'm left with is the mass due to the water. Here's what I do. I know that one water molecule, right, has two H's. Two times one is two. And one oxygen. One times 16 is 16. What I just did here is a formula mass, right? Two H's per one water. Each hydrogen has an atomic mass of one from the periodic table. Each oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So you should see that one water has a mass of what? 18. So we have five waters. It's really helpful to keep your water together when you do these problems. If you don't, okay, it makes more work for yourself. So five times the mass of one water is 18. What's five times 18? Five times 18 is 90. And now let's go find that total so we can put that in this bottom because we're making a percentage. So 90 plus 48 plus 12 plus 24 gives me 174. And that is grams per mole. Now that's going to go on my bottom. Okay, so put that right here, 174. That's the total. Now, what's my part? Just like the one we did above. The part is the one I'm asking for. Here, I was asking for the calcium in this. In this question, I'm asking for the water. So, I put the water up top. And guess what? As I told you, it's helpful to keep the water what? Together. Why? Because the entire mass of the water is already there. That is going to go up top. So, 90 is the part that I'm dealing with. I'm asking for the water. This is the mass of the water. If you didn't keep your water together, you'd have to figure out how many H's and O make five waters. So, mass of my water over the total mass of my hydrate gives me what? Times 100. Let's not get ahead of myself. So, times 100, what is that percentage? So, 90 divided, which is the mass of the water, divided by the mass of the hydrate, 174, times 100 gives me 51.7 percent. And that is my answer to the problem. All right, 51.1 percent. That means that 51 percent, 51.17 percent of the entire mass of my what? Hydrate is due to the water. Okay, so 51.7% is my answer. Okay, now by the way, this is the theoretical way we do it. This would be if I was to do this experiment with no errors. Okay, so to figure out what our known should be, unlike other labs where we tell you what the knowns are, you're going to figure out the known value that you're going to be doing in lab either today or tomorrow. Okay, number six, how do we do the experiment? Well, my friends, in chemistry, what you do is you have to essentially do the experiment where you take a crucible, which is a little Q container, and we put some hydrate in it, which is what? A salt with water, right? It's got these waters. This dot means with five water. So if we had magnesium carbonate hydrate called pentahydrate, this is the hydrate. This is exactly what we put into our crucible. That's the salt with the water. Then we would heat until we drive off all the waters away, and guess what you're left with? You're left with the dried compound, which is called the anhydrate. So what they're saying is we're going to take this hydrate, we're going to heat it, we're going to mass it out, heat it, mass it out. We're going to keep heating and massing it out till the mass doesn't change anymore. And what we're going to have is the dried compound. Okay, so how does this give us the experimental percent by mass of hydrate? Well, wait a minute. What do we need? It's part, if it's a percentage, always, over total. What do we need? We need the what? Mass of the, what's the part I'm asking for? What is the part I'm asking for? Okay. Uh, I didn't say it in the question, so I'm bad Grotsky. What's the percent by mass of water, I should say? So we're looking always for water. So we're looking for this water. So the part that I need is the water. So I don't have the water. If 
but my friends in chemistry, what do I have? And let me start cleaning some of this up. What do I have? Well, I have the hydrate with the water. I have the anhydrate, which is without the water. I have the mass of the hydrates, the salt with the water. I have the anhydrate after I heat it and drive off the water. What's left? So how do I get the water? Okay, for those that still don't know, you subtract. If this has water and the anhydrate does not, the difference is the water. So you subtract the anhydrate from the hydrate. And when we do so, we take 3.56, we subtract 1.28, and what we get is 2.28. 2.28. And that, my friends, is the water. It's the difference. Why did it get lighter? Because we did what? We drove the water outward. So what's my part? The part I care about in these experiments is the water. So I take my 2.28, which is the grams of the water, and I divide it by the total. The total is the total mass of the what? The hydrate. What is the mass of our hydrate? There it is. 3.56. And then, of course, I'm going to times this by 100. So part over total times 100. And what do I have? 2.28 divided by 3.56, which you get is 64%. 64% of the entire mass of this compound is due to water. That's what you're going to do in lab today. Now, what I do is I'll compare this percentage with my what? My known that I get from doing the pencil and paper. You can see in this case I have some error. So let's go scroll down. I'm almost done talking, and you can finish the rest of the problems. And number seven, you're going to do this on your own in class. And what you're going to do is you're going to find the percent by mass of water in the hydrate using pencil and paper. You're going to figure out, like we did, the theoretical, like we did in number five. So this is just like number five. Okay? So this is just like number five. So let's just write it. Like number five. This is how you're going to figure out your known. Number eight is the experiment. Okay? Now this is what you're going to see in lab today. You're going to collect this data. You're going to take a crucible. Please pay attention if you're zoning out. This is what you're doing in lab today. You're going to take a crucible, which is a little cute porcelain container. You have the mass of your crucible and cover. It's going to be 10 grams. Okay, now, you're going to add some hydrate. Guess what? It gets heavier. What's the mass of your hydrate? Well, this is the crucible and cover, and this is the crucible and cover and the hydrate. So what's the difference? Take away the container. You should get 2.50 grams. Now, I'm going to keep heating. From here to here, we're heating. If we heat, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get what? Lighter, because we're driving off the what? What are we driving off? The water from the crystal, from the salt. And notice the first heating went to 11.665. How do we know you're driven off all the water until you heat some more? When you heat some more, it's going to get what? Lighter. And then how do you know that that's the... The point that we stop at. No, you have to what? Keep heating and measuring until the mass does not stop. And this tells us when the masses stay constant that we've driven off all our water. So take your 11.625 grams and do what with it? Well, you've got to subtract out the container, which in this, which this case is 10.000. And we do that, we get 5261. So and this should be an extra zero here. So this, so the mass of your anhydrate, the dried compound, is 1.625. The entire experiment, guys, is based upon, and this should be an extra zero here, is based upon getting the mass of your hydrate and the dried compound. Once you have these two, can't you figure out what we did for number six, the percent by mass? Once you have the mass of your hydrate, anhydrate, what do you do to find the experimental? And please finish that. And then do a percent error with number 9. The percent error is, well, 
if this was our hydrate, we're going to get our known value from this. Compare this with your experimental and do it and do a percent error. Okay, and you should know that it's going to be the experimental value minus your known all over your known. And the known we get is called theoretical. We're going to get that from the pencil and paper. So this back page is a lot like my friends in chemistry, the um, lab you're going to do today. Hope that helped. Right now, I, we need you guys to do number two, four, and seven, and complete eight and nine. That's the classwork right now. I am trying to post a key for your class to check at the end. Okay? Hope that helped.